Hey everybody, this is Dana from Amber Dog Productions. So this coming week, uh, I'm heading to Clear Lake to do a little bit of investigation on something that has been kind of been in the back of my head for a while. And I don't know, maybe I'm way off base or not. I, I, I don't know. But if you, if you observe some of the collapsed lava tubes that I've been filming there with the ROV at Clear Lake, um, with my drag cameras, I could see them, but with the ROV, i am able to get down and see the actual topography down there. And this last trip I was down there, I got to noticing that with the type of substrate that's down there, that white substrate, it's almost like powder. And like everything else on the planet, uh, things tend to level themselves out over time. And the center of a lot of these uh, collapsed lava tubes, um, or the center of them, instead of being filled with white, is still dark. And so that got me thinking, where the ancient spring is, right here, let's say going out into the lake, where the ancient spring is, to the left and right of that, primarily, uh, are several of these that are out in the main body of the lake, uh, on that end of the lake, anyway. And some of, the, some of them have a center core that's dark. And so I got to wondering, Given that the ancient spring is here, you know, right here, and then it goes down into the lake, and then out over in other areas are these tubes, collapsed areas. I got to wondering, I wonder if there's water that's coming up or going down that's keeping that core open, because over time you would think that would be filled in like a bowl um, with just sediment, and it's not. So. I came up with a way that uh, I'm going to test that. And so it's kind of cheesy, but keep it simple, right? So here, this is the attachment that uh, hooks onto my ROV. Okay, the ROV sits right here, and this is the claw attachment, so you can articulate these, these fingers to open and close, okay? And that's what these do. And then this cable end plugs into the ROV for control. So I thought, okay, how can I use this? Now the problem is the substrate there is, like I said, it's like a powder. It's uh, if you get near it, it it just you know clouds up everything. So, and then of course my ROV has got six thrusters on it. So in order for me to find out if there's any water current updraft or downdraft that goes you know into those, I need to. Um, not interfere with that. I need to make sure it's not me doing it. So I'm going to take this, and this is real cheesy, but it might work. And so I have this. Now this is a really thin piece of ribbon. It's attached to this, uh, I don't know, it looks like an antenna, but it's something else, a little magnet on the end of it and whatever. It's like a retrie retrieval thing, and you can extend this out quite far. Okay, it goes way out of frame on my camera, okay, but basically. Uh, so the idea is I'm going to take, it goes even longer than that, but the idea is I'm going to take this, and I've already tested it, it does hook, and I attach this onto the claw, like so. It'll sit like that, and then I'll extend that out and send the ROV down. And with that on there, the ribbon, what I'll do is I'll cruise up until this is near the opening or the dark spot, we'll say, because we don't really know what they are other than the core of a lava tube. Um, and, and I'll look at the current and see if this goes up or down or if it's just neutral, it just doesn't really do anything as I move this around, it just doesn't do much. And the idea is that perhaps I'll get an answer if there's water coming into the lake through those um, as well as the ancient spring. So that's an idea. Now. There's a couple possibilities. Um, one, I could have updraft, which I'm suspecting could be the case, because something's got to be keeping those cores open. Otherwise, they would just fill in with sediment and be a bowl. Uh, there is the possibility that water's going down and who knows where after that. But my gut's kind of telling me that's where water's coming in. Now, there is one other possibility. Back in part of that, the original river that came in through the valley uh, before it turned into a lake is now seasonal. And uh, once in a while you'll see, uh, this year it was really raging. 
So if, if when I take this probe and I put it out there and it's just dead, nothing going on, this is later in the year when all the snow melts pretty much calmed down and the only source of water coming into the lake is the, is the ancient spring because the water coming in from Fish Lake has stopped, the original seasonal coming in uh, on the original river area that came into the lake, that has stopped uh, pretty much everything other than the ancient spring. And obviously that's enough to sustain the lake, but if the holes aren't showing any current, then I have to come back uh, this next spring during the snow melt and see if, uh, if that is maybe their seasonal. I, I don't know. And then I can reprobe it again to see if, if water is coming up through those holes at that time. I may be way off the mark here, but my gut is telling me something is keeping that center core uh, open. Now, I'll, I'll put some pictures in this video, uh, some little video clips or something like that. I'll dig something up and throw it in here so you understand better what I'm talking about. So I'll be heading back down there this Thursday and uh, sometime the next between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, somewhere in there, I'll be uh, on station and trying this thing out to get the answer to that. So if you're, uh, you know, interested in, in that, cause if you've seen those things in my videos that uh, I'll try to throw some clips in there, uh, let's get an answer to this. This is just one more riddle to this lake that uh, I'd kind of like to know the answer to. And if you're interested too, well, check out that upcoming video and we'll, we'll, we'll either know or we won't, or it could be seasonal. I, I don't know. That's part of exploring and documenting this lake and uh, just kind of doing the research that I do there. So wish me luck and be a part of it. Let's check this thing out. Okay. So right here you can see uh, the edge of the lava field on the left. This isn't really the edge, but the visible edge. You can see that round circle right there. That's one of many uh, that are located over here in top right corner. You can see a depression for one over there. So these are exactly what I'm talking about. Another thing that kind of sets these apart is uh, a lot of these tubes like this, these collapsed exposed area, you'll see a lot of vegetation that's coming up out of these holes like that. Um, does it mean anything? I don't know, but I have noticed in a lot of these holes like this, it does seem like vegetation seems to gravitate towards those spots. So check some of these things out that I'll show you right here and we'll take it from there. Here's uh, another one coming up into, and uh, you can see the roughness on the edge. Okay, so that's definitely uh, a fault into the lava as I climb up and over it and look down into it. Um, these are the kind of things I need to get into to stick that probe into from one angle or another and try to see. Now in this spot, you can see I'm kind of coming up over the edge and you can see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, there's eight of them in view, little depressions in there. And like on a beach or anywhere else, you may have smooth rolling topography, but these sharper indentations like this um, really kind of just scream there's something else going on. And you can see in that one right there, that really black spot on the kind of the left side. Uh, there's the plant life again. You can just see the exposed lava, things like that. These are the kind of areas that really are drawing my attention as you look out over the topography of this. And this one, uh, you can you can see there's the core again, and you can see where the edge of the earth is kind of broken down in layers right there. Uh, all of these are located on the side of the lake where the lava is. There are none of these across the way because uh, the lava only went so far across into this valley before it filled up. Here you can see a main one right there in the center, a small one up to the right, and one off beyond it. Um, and these are the kind of things that I could see with the drag camera, but you could not really appreciate the topography as well until I started getting the ROV in the water. So here's some of the views of these.
this one we're coming up onto right here i think i don't know it's really interesting he's got a good hole but you look at the edges of it look more like layers of sediment versus clumpy like lava and stuff but there's the hole right there and yeah i know lava has thin layers as well but you know it's hard to tell and this one, you can see some sediment floating in the water, and it's not really going up or down. So this is one of the ones that made me think, you know, maybe these are seasonal. Uh, this particular one is the one that brought that to mind uh, as I kind of went back and reviewed it. These things are everywhere, and I'd really like to get some answers. And if you're interested in knowing about these two, then follow my channel. Let's get some answers. Let's experience nature and wish me luck. Be a part of this journey, too. I appreciate you all coming along. Stay in a price at Amber Dog Productions. We'll see you.